Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Brother Joshua Kenny Greenwood. I am the senior pastor here at the Empowerment Center Church, churchfreedom.org, and testimonytoday.org. Now, today's video is going to just keep it real. It's just going to keep it real. Uh, you've heard me speak many times about how the Lord has found all three branches of our government in contempt, uh, and that the church doesn't need to respect its authority or, or submit to the authority of the three branches of government anymore. Let me explain to you how many different ways and why the Holy Spirit has allowed this to take place. Firstly, let's talk about the uh, legislative branch of the government. The legislative branch violated the separation of powers. And there's a very important principle in our constitution, a very important protocol uh, called the separation of powers. And it was the separation of church and state. What our founding fathers here in the United States had founded this country on. And that, that, that founding principle has been violated in more ways than I can count through the legislative branch. The very first incident where, where the legislative branch truly violated the separation of church and state and the power of, of church and state actually took place not with the institution of 501c3. It actually took place before that with the Marriage, Divorce, and Certificate Act that allowed for uh, the officiation of marriage to be done by the government, to officially recognize that through the state and through the federal government for the purposes of, of, of filing jointly on your income tax returns. That process of recognizing and being able to officiate marriage was never once the responsibility of the government. It was solely the responsibility of the church alone. It was instituted by the Lord in the book of Genesis, and there is a specific purpose behind the institution of marriage, which is found in Malachi chapter 2, verse 14, which specifically states that the purpose of marriage was to produce godly offspring. Okay? So the very first thing that the government did in the legislative branch where it violated that separation of powers was it got into the business of the church and decided we we're going to go ahead as the state and go ahead and be able to officiate marriage. That's its first place. The second time that it began to uh, truly violate it was actually back in the 1960s, and it was during the civil rights era, during the, uh, when segregation was in the land, and it, it took a prophet by the name of Martin Luther King Jr., and he said enough was enough, and he marched on Washington, and, he, and, he, and the churches... The church leaders got together and said that this was satanic in its nature. It was a wicked law. The law of segregation was, uh, was wholly satanic and wicked in its nature. It violated our basic human rights that all men were created equal in the eyes of the Lord. It violated the law of love. The vi it, it violated the greatest commandment uh, of our own faith, which is to love the Lord and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, to segregate you wouldn't segregate yourself, right? And so the church rose up and passed fundamentally the most important civil rights acts of our era, which was the Civil Rights Act of 1965 and the Civil Rights Act, I believe, in 1968. Forgive me if I'm wrong, okay? Uh, and when, when they passed those laws, Lyndon Johnson, he knew that the church, it had incredible power. The Congress knew that the church had incredible power to sway Congress, just like that, on a dime, that the church can marshal all of its forces and they can represent a, a body of, of, of registered voters that can literally change the face of government, just like that. And so what the government do, as soon as they pass the Civil Rights Act, they passed the 1969, in October of 1969, the Act of 501c3, which now what it did was it allowed churches to, instead of being considered churches under the law 508C1A of our U.S. Code of Laws, now they want the, 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 the churches to organize themselves under 501C3 as incorporations. Because 501C3 is not for churches. There's not even the word church mentioned in 501C3's laws. It's meant for religious organizations that have been incorporated, certain religious trusts, so what's the first thing? So what they do, they try to control the church through banking. So what's the first thing you do when you're a church and you got to go down to open up a bank account if you want to receive tithes and offerings and any type of donations 
given to the church. You got to open up a bank account, right? What's the very first thing that the banker's going to ask? Where is your articles of incorporation in your EIN number, right? To every single solitary church. And so what they did was that the was Congress bottlenecked the church into accepting this for banking purposes and then put a stipulation on it and said, you're no longer mandatorily tax exempted under 508C1A. Instead, because you become incorporated, the, the benefit of, of tax exemption is now a conditional benefit based on the conditions that you never engage in politics in any way, shape, or form. You can't put out political propaganda. You can't influence uh, politics. You can't lobby Congress. You can't do any of that, right? Took the power right out of the church. So instead of those church leaders continuing with that momentum, instead, they dissipated and became the Southern Poverty Law Center, which we know today. That was one of the most fundamental shifts and one of the greatest separation of power violations. Because now, if you violate that provision of 501c3, Congress now said, the legislative branch said, well, now the IRS can come in and audit your church to even see whether or not you can still claim your tax exemption. I'm sorry, but if there is a separation of powers and the state has the authority to, to, to allow the IRS to come in and audit the personal, private articles and effects of any church, which is a constitutionally protected institution, then the church also needs to have the authority to to go in and audit both the Congress, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. If we don't have the authority to audit what those men and women do, if we don't have the authority to audit the Treasury, like the IRS has the uh, authority to try to audit the Treasury of the church, then that is a violation of the separation of powers. That means one institution has more power and authority and is encroaching on the freedom and the liberty of the other institution, this institution being the church itself. If the roles were reversed, if the roles were reversed and the church had unlimited power and authority to audit the IRS, the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the, and the uh, executive branches of the government, if we had the authority to audit those without those three branches of government being able to audit us in return, people around the United States would also call that a violation of the separation of powers with the church abusing the power by auditing the government. Okay, so so we have several, several, several encroaches. Then, then, what does the legislative branch do under George W. Bush? It decides that it's going to institute what it calls the Defense of Marriage Act that was instituted and it was written by the Alliance Defending Freedom helping out George W. Bush. Now they had great intentions. Oh, their intentions were pure when they tried to do this. What they failed to understand was now they made marriage a civil rights issue, which in effect absolutely destroyed the modern day Christian church. So what does the old saying go? that the road to hell is paved with good intentions? Well, the Alliance Defending Freedom and the Republican Party with the, with, the, uh, uh, with the legislative branch, you have effectively destroyed the Christian church in your, here in the United States. Not only was it not your responsibility to defend marriage, you should have never been in a position to defend marriage because you should have never been able to officiate marriage in the very, very first place. <laughs> you shouldn't have to defend something that belongs solely to the church. By doing so, then you created what they call gender discrimination laws. These laws are absolutely wholly satanic. They are literally, they've been birthed from the, uh, uh, from the LGBT movement, that lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender movement, and the lobby that's in Washington, D.C. And what they did was they started making it to where, see, what they did was they did it really slick. They said, we're not coming against churches, we're coming against corporations. But then what's up? After uh, 1969, after uh, 501c3's implementation, guess what every church does when they go open up a bank account? They're no longer a church. They're now an incorporation, right? So they make these corporate uh, anti-discriminatory laws that prevent any corporation from discriminating against any type of gender bias. So if a person comes in to a bakery and, and they're a homosexual couple and they want you to bake and celebrate, use your Holy Ghost gifts and talents. 
that God gave you to, uh, to accept what God considers sin and abomination to trade dollar bills in exchange for you using your God-given gifts and talents in exchange for money, which is the same as prostitution, taking something that's sacred and holy that God gave you and then doling it out for profit, that's called prostitution. And so what they wanted you to do is to prostitute as companies your gift, okay, that God gave you in, in violation of your religious conscience, your religious freedom to deny that type of sinful behavior. And, and instead, they want to fine you. And if you speak out, up, speak out against it, then they'll consider that hate speech as well. So now, by denying this, you're committing a hate crime. Literally, you're now under the code of the law committing a hate crime. If you speak out against it, they call it hate speech. So now you have uh, companies like Melissa's Cakes that go through an organ, through, a, through a, a, a special court that's not trial by jury, that goes through a special secret administrative court that's literally that the judges and the administrative officials that are in charge of this administrative court run the largest pro-lesbian, gay, bisexual lobby in Washington, D.C., send them through the special court, fine them $135,000, and then when they try to raise the money to, to defend themselves on GoFundMe, they, uh, uh, they, they, they pressure GoFundMe to terminate their, their GoFundMe uh, a contribution campaign so they can't even raise the money, okay? This is in addition to the legislative branch. This instituted these laws, by the way. This is the legislative branch from the federal to the state that's been instituting these laws to where now they're saying that pastors, you can't hold church services in your home without a state-sponsored permit. But the church can't come in and say you can't hold government meetings without a church-sponsored permit. That's a violation of the separation of powers. That you as a pastor, just like Ben Charles and Crazy Faith Outreach, that were, were the state government, where was it? Where, where Steve Hall, the city manager there, that's in Olympia, Washington, tries to literally fine this pastor in this church for feeding the helpless without a state sponsored permit. So now, just for you to be a minister of the gospel and to do what the Holy Lord commanded you to do, okay? to walk out your religious freedom that's supposed to be constitutionally protected here in the United States, they say that you have to have a state-sponsored permit. They pass a, a, an ordinance in Idaho that says that if you do not accept gay marriage, that you can now be risked to going to jail for over 90 days. Men and women of God, the Holy Ghost finds the legislative branch, these elected officials that were supposed to adhere to the constitutional separation of powers but decided to rebel against God for the sake of money, God finds that institution in contempt. Now, let's go to the judicial branch of the government. The judicial branch, God finds in complete contempt because they've upheld every single satanic law that the, that the legislative branch has been passing that has violated the separation of powers between church and state. They are the ones where the U.S. Supreme Court, where it was prophesied to you on March the 7th, uh, well in advance of the June 28th ruling that the Holy Spirit revealed to me to go and email out to 10,000 pastors that the U.S. Supreme Court was going to rule in favor of gay marriage. So what did the judicial branch do on June the 28th? They ruled in favor of gay marriage violating in the clearest violation ever of the separation of powers between the, uh, the church and the state, they have ruled in favor of a satanic, satanic, which the very basis of the code of law that our government is even founded as a republic on from this Bible, okay, decided to rebel just like kingdoms of old, okay, the kingdoms of Bel and kingdoms like Jezebel, and they decided to violate the separation of church and state in favor of gay marriage, attempting to place in this country that they would put on par in violation of what our word, our law here in this book, which is the greatest book of law in the entire universe, says about the institution of marriage. 
the state has come in, the judicial branch, which was supposed to never interfere in the matters of church and state, decided to interfere with the, with the principles of the church and say what the church considers to be evil, it was good and accepted by the majority whole in violation of the separation of powers. Thank you, God, Holy Ghost, judicial branch, the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of the earth, the very authority that you are to submit yourselves to, all nine of you individuals are to bow before and submit yourselves to his rulership of law. God finds you in complete contempt and the church no longer has to accept your rulership of law and they can expect no justice in your courts in this season until God has rewritten everything that you have done and has undid every single satanic law and you have repented of your sins in Jesus' name. Now let's go to the executive branch of the government and let's talk very specifically about both. This, this government, and we can't leave out George W. Bush because he instituted and he lobbied for the Defense of Marriage Act. That was supposed to be the church's responsibility. If these men are supposed to be true friends of the church when they're getting elected, how I remember when Barack Obama, when he came to Redemption World Outreach Center, that's the church that my wife and I came from with Apostle Ron Carpenter Jr. And he came in there acting like he was a Christian. He came in there acting because Obama's a liar. He's a liar, he's a manipulator. He literally is the man of lawlessness it describes in, in Thessalonians, okay? All he does is lie. See, o Obama, you think Obama's a Muslim. Obama's not a Muslim. He's not a Christian. The man's an atheist. He doesn't care. The man is whatever you want him to be on that day if it gains him any political favor. The man is a liar. He's a manipulator. He's a murderer, okay? That's all that man does. When, he's, when he lies and when he speaks... Uh, all he's speaking is lies because he speaks his native language, just like his father, Satan. Okay, that man needs to repent for what he's done because this uh, this is what this man's done. He went ahead in his infinite wisdom and he decided to himself he was going to go ahead and he was going to be a righteous person for people's freedom because he took an oath to the Constitution, right? The same Constitution that specifically barred this type of separation of powers. This was supposed to protect the church but instead what that man do he decided to placate to a majority of americans because they were offended they were offended because they didn't want to hear that they were going to go to hell because of their sinful lifestyle that god considers an abomination so what they want to do they wanted to change the laws in their favor thinking that somehow that was going to make them feel better and get into heaven not only is it not going to get you into heaven, you can write every law there is, a uh, 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 lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender individual, you can attempt to write every single law that there is. You can attempt to convince every Presbyterian, Episcopal, Lutheran, and Methodist and Baptist preacher that you want that your lifestyle will get you into heaven. Not only will you not get into heaven and that the kingdom of heaven has not been reserved for you, the fiery lake and the pit of fire and sulfur, the second death, is reserved for you. You need to repent of your sins. Immediately repent of your sins. Accept the testimony of Jesus Christ. Don't think that because you think you're a good person that that's going to help you. Jesus is the dividing line. Jesus is the dividing line. He didn't come, okay, to create some superficial peace that glosses over deep divisions just to create some superficial peace that creates some sort of harmony that you think is good in your mind. That's not what Jesus Christ came to do. The same Jesus Christ that came and spoke about love was the exact same one that said that he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And don't think that because he's been, he has fulfilled it, that he has abolished the law in any way, shape, or form. The same God that talked about love, the same God that spoke about do not commit murder, said. Do not uh, commit uh, uh, anger in your heart and murder in your heart through anger. The same God that said, do not commit adultery, said. Do not lust in your heart. He never did away with the law. In fact, he actually increased it to make it a heart thing. So if you have a heart for the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to repent of your sins. You need to, to divorce yourself from uh, the satanic influence of this person that's in your life that is influencing you to continue to 
uh, 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 violate and rebel against the Lord in this sinful, satanic relationship that you consider to be a good thing is not a good thing. That is an act of rebellion, and you need to immediately repent of that and seek the Lord's repentance and get yourself into a body of believers that will lift you up based on your spiritual gifts and talents. As far as the president and the executive branch goes, the executive branch wholly, completely violated the separation of powers by instituting, by not only targeting Christian groups with the IRS, with Lois Lerner, committing massive injustice and manipulation on a global scale where they delete their own emails. But if you do this, if the church deleted its emails like that, it would be called obstruction of justice and contempt of court. When they do it, however, it's not a violation of the separation of powers. They go ahead and they audit you just on a whim, simply because you are a Christian conservative group. The Department of Justice, God holds you, you're all with the executive branch, God holds you in contempt. You lie, you manipulate, you create uses of deception. You have wholly manipulated the public. You have, you have spied, you have in violation of, of our constitutional protected rights of, of privacy. You have completely violated your oaths, not only to the Lord, but to the American people. You did not uphold anything in the church's favor where, where the government, where all three branches of the government were in violation of the separation of church and state. You did not uphold a single solitary thing. Instead, you have lied, you have manipulated, you, the FBI has created false AP stories to try to entrap criminals, so they lie and they manipulate and they deceive and they do everything that's considered evil to trap people that they consider evil that are doing the exact same thing except for they're not going to jail the the the, the justice department's not going to jail so now you've got a government that has no justice your justice is a perversion in the eyes of the lord jesus christ the holy spirit finds you in complete contempt executive branch we're not done yet then, what'd you do? You decided to listen to President Obama as he accepted gay marriage. That man of lawlessness, as he decided that he was going to go forth and he was going to promote his satanic agenda throughout the United States of America, and you made it your business executive branch to go in to all the states and to repeal the, the protections that protected churches and the state institutions against the recognition of same-sex marriage and you went into every one of those states in violation of the separation of powers and the ultimate the ultimate act is when you took in complete rebellion against God when God just like in the days of Noah just like in the days of Noah where Noah a godless society based on satanic antichrist spirit the same type of spirit that was homosexual in its nature, that, that, that interfered with the genetic code in the way that it's done today. God floods the world and then delivers us a promise through the rainbow. His beautiful code, his electromagnetic spectrum that we in the church take absolutely sacred. That is the code of God, the breath of life that comes from the Lord. And you took that code in complete mockery you took what represents the breath of God with the rainbow of the Lord, this promise, his sacred promise, that he would never flood this world again based off that type of, uh, of, of, of sinful, abomination, rebellious practices. And on the eve of when the Supreme Court went ahead in violation of the separation of powers, accepted gay marriage as the rule of the land and as the law of the land, you went ahead and painted the rainbow colors and then married a homosexual couple in the White House that night in complete violation of the separation of powers. In complete violation of the separation of powers. Is the government run through the church? Does the government, does the executive branch meet within the congregation of a church to influence policy in the United States of America? No, it doesn't. 
because that would be a violation of the separation of powers. Yet you took the ceremonies, the sacred rites, and, and, and sacred things that God had reserved solely for his church and instituted it, and not only did that within the White House itself, but then in addition to it, went ahead and completely in an act of rebellion against our faith and presented the colors of the rainbow as a celebration for an act of rebellion against God, which means that you have also rebelled against the church, which we are, the congregant body of believers. You have violated the church. You have violated your power. You have violated the separation of powers. And you have done everything in your business to make sure that the church has been dismantled, destroyed, and that your satanic agenda has been furthered within the church. God finds all three of you branches of government in complete, total contempt. All three of you, men and women of God, you are not to submit to, adhere to, or submit to any authority whatsoever from three, these three branches. Don't sit there and let them play you anymore. You are not, you are not to submit to their rulership of authority. They have violated until they repent of what they've done, until they have undid every single satanic law that they have instituted in these United States of America. You are not in any way, shape, or form to adhere to a single solitary standard that they have. I don't care if they threaten you with imprisonment and death. If they threaten you with fines that are extraordinary, if they threaten you with imprisonment, if they threaten you with death, you are to hold your ground. You are to say enough is enough. You can threaten us with imprisonment. You can threaten us with death. You can threaten us with fines that will bankrupt us. And we are not accepting your government. And we hold your courts. We hold your law enforcement. We hold your, your, your authorities and complete contempt because the Holy Spirit holds you in contempt and we are not going to submit to or adhere to your rulership or your authority in any way, shape, or form until you repent to yourself before the Lord and you make this thing right before God and you make it right before the church. And until that day happens, saints of God, you are not to adhere. If they threaten you, resist. You are to resist them. You are not to accept their penalties. You are not to accept their fines. You are not to accept their jail terms. You are not to accept their imprisonment. You are not to accept a single solitary one of those things. You are to hold your ground. You are to stand firm in your faith. And we're going to lock hands together as a united body of Christ. Does this mean that you're called to violence? Absolutely not. You are called to love. But love always protects. And it always hopes. And it always perseveres. It does not delight in evil and lies, but always rejoices with the truth. Until there is truth, this church has nothing to rejoice about in this country. None whatsoever. So if you want to know why God, you want to know why God has found contempt for all three branches of government, this gives you a better understanding why. And this is just the beginning we're not even discussing the manipulation of the Fed and what they've done on Wall Street. We're not even talking about what they've done in Ukraine and with Russia and how they manipulated and lied in that incident. We're not even talking about how we funded ISIS that's killed and murdered our brothers and sisters in faith, where we have generals that, that not only uh, uh, speak about this, that, that it was willful actions by the administration to propagate and to fund and facilitate ISIS. We have documents from Judicial Watch that specifically state, specifically state that we helped create ISIS with Saudi Arabia. You ever watch those movies where they got an assassin and they in in this in, in the in America like pays the assassin to go do something, but then like when the assassin's done killing whatever he's got to kill, then they go in and they kill the assassin. Okay, to cover up their mess. That's what America did with ISIS. We created the assassin to go in and to take out Bashar al-Assad so that we could take over Russia's warm water port of Tartus. That's what we were meant to do so that we could help out Saudi Arabia because they helped us so that we could go in with our companies during the Gulf War as a favor to them. So we used them and they murdered 
our brothers and sisters in faith. They murdered our brothers and sisters. They willfully did this by generals and men and women in that defense department and in that executive branch. We're not even getting into that. No men and women of God, just like in the days of Red Shek, Meshek, and Abednego with King Nebuchadnezzar that tried to strike an idol and have everybody in the country submit to it, you are not to submit to the rulership of this government until this government submits itself and it repents to the Holy Spirit and it repents to the Lord for what it's done. And it needs to repent. I speak protection over these words in the mighty name of Jesus. I am speaking under the authority as the senior pastor here at the Empowerment Center Church. I am not speaking from any authority that comes from our uh, corporation soul or any corporate body. I'm speaking not even as an American citizen. I am speaking under the direct authority of the church that is our, not only our right, our constitutionally protected right, but I am coming under the authority of the Holy Spirit that has commanded me. God has commanded me to speak these words and they are protected and there's nothing that you can do about it. Jezebel spirit, your days are numbered on this planet. And I can't wait until the Holy Ghost and the King set you into the abyss. That day is a good day and the whole entire universe will rejoice because you will finally be eradicated and off this planet. Praise you, Holy Spirit, and thank you for your protection, God. Thank you, Lord. I resist you, Satan, and you will flee from me. Thank you, Lord. Share this with your friends, folks. Share this with godly men that will actually stand up and do something. Stand up, men. Godly men, stand up. There's godly men in this country, and we're willing to do something about it. We're willing to stand in the gap with you and pray and come together in Matthew 18, 18 and 19, where we bind and loose things here on earth as it is in heaven. We are willing and we're ready and we're able right now, men of God. Thank you, Lord. Let your revival come on this planet. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. You are the King, the Lord of heaven. You're the Lord, commander of the armies of heaven. To you I put my joy, and to you I put my strength. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for your oil of joy. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God. I speak this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Woo!